one testing. Ladies and gentlemen, they say if you don't start these things on time, you can't keep them on time. So according to my watch, it's just 10 o'clock, and we will get started, and as I have promised the speakers, I'm going to try to keep them on time. And I guess that's truly one of the reasons they gave me this assignment, because I'm big enough to shove them over if they persist. I am the director of the Center for Industrial Research and Service at Iowa State University. First in Washington, and then in Vietnam. He was a civilian worker at Cornell Hospital in Vietnam, and was killed in an airplane crash in November 1973. I speak to the senior, Mr. John Levante, who was a very vain Colorado man from Kansas. He grew up in South Dakota on the Rosebud Sioux Reservation, attended Grinnell College, and then obtained his law degree at DePaul University in Chicago. He was a practicing attorney for five years in Boulder, Colorado. He was a Native American Rights Fund. One of the cases in which he has been working on is the Squawky Hunting Rights case, where he's done a lot of cases, also a co-founder of the Emancipation Protest Group, which is a very well-known group of people who are still being considered by the courts. And he was also a member of the Emancipation Protest Group, which is a very well-known group of people who are still being considered by the courts. And he was also a member of the Emancipation Protest Group, which is a very well-known group of people who are still being considered by the courts. And he was also a member of the Emancipation Protest Group, which is a very well-known group of people who are still being considered by the courts. In the December the issue of the headlines. Modern Materials Handling Thank Magazine, you. written by Mike Rowan, of the, well, the uh, editor of, the, of this uh, publication, uh, which I thought we might well serve as an opening to the conference. Uh, uh, Let's start out, and I'm quoting now. What can we do now about product liability? Should you be interested? Is it really your problem? Well, the answer is yes to both questions. Product liability costs are driving up the price of everything that you buy. And if these costs continue their present rate of escalation, simply on a straight line basis, they'll exceed 10% of the gross national product by 1985. Long before that, they will put some companies, particularly the small ones, out of business. And they will have destroyed those jobs that these companies represent. Product liability today threatens all segments of business. The users of equipment, as well as the manufacturers and distributors. What then can you do? The most important action you can take is to contact lawmakers in your state. Action really counts with your legislators. They do listen to their constituents. But they must be told what the problems are and what they, they can do about them. That's the end Success. of but the quotation. I noticed that when we were coming in this, into the room this morning, and as you were registering, are sovereign at the basis, are sovereign that you were looking rather questionably at the name tags. The hat with the bullet holes in it that you have on your registration, and that Colonel Spicer and I are wearing. You know, we've been shooting that knee for a good many years. The spike has been able to dodge him a little bit, but we both got hit this morning. But the hats with the bullet holes in that's a symbol that was very deliberately chosen. Top executives of Iowa manufacturing businesses are required to wear Many, many hats. Meetings, put into the General managers, procurement officers, members. personnel directors, right now, financial controllers. And yes, today you are all wearing the hat two. of your product liability responsibility. As you can see, you've already been hit. And while that comment is a bit facetious, it's probably one of the most humorous comments that you'll hear today. Now, if I might take just a little bit of time, that's the danger of putting somebody like me up here. I'm going to tell you a little bit about CIRUS, or the Center for Industrial Research and Service. We are a part of Iowa State University Extension, which works with Iowa manufacturers. As a result of our daily contacts with industry through the field representatives and projects and office calls from manufacturers, CIRUS is in a very unique position to spot trends and trouble areas well before they become major problems, as, as such as we are facing today. Tony Spicer, who is the chairman of this conference, conducted the first product liability seminar 
Iowa in 1973 through the serious operation. By the way, the gentleman standing back here in the corner with a hat on is Carney Spicer. He's the man that worked very hard to put this together, together with a fine committee. In 1973, we could see that there was, would be some, should be some attention given to a conference subject of today. But of course, there was no way to know that the magnitude of the current product liability situation. And as I mentioned earlier, this is an extremely serious situation, and we hope that when the day is over, we will go back to your regular work with a better understanding of not only the size of the problem we face, but some useful suggestions of what you can do personally to better protect the interests of your company and your community. The sole position in bringing this information to you is just the same as it is for all of our work. We try to find the best possible solution to a problem and present these answers to the client or to you. It's the client's responsibility to decide whether the answers are good and whether you should accept them and whether you should use them. We are not part of any regulatory or enforcement agency. We believe the persons bringing you information at this conference today are the best that can be found. They know what they're talking about. Now, the and it's up to you to decide happened? how you will yeah, use tomorrow that you hear here today. What's that lady with? Well, that's first, while our daily problems are directly related to helping primarily the Iowa manufacturer, we're also very conscious of the impact a viable company has on a total community. The average well, dollar industrial employee will earn approximately $13,000. For a company employing 25 people, this is a payroll of $325,000. This is earned money that is used to buy services, products, pay taxes, and so forth. It's money that supports many other community businesses and provides jobs for a lot of other people. If this manufacturer, for some reason, must close his doors and quit operating, the financial impact on the whole area can border upon being disastrous. If only a fourth of our 3,800 manufacturers in Iowa were forced to drop product, li product lines or go out of business because they could not afford to pay for insurance or are found liable in a suit, we could have a meaningful effect on the economy of our entire state. We are on your side. We will continue to work with you individually and collectively to try to bring sensible solutions to these problems. We appreciate the efforts and interest of many co-sponsoring groups who have, helped, who have helped support this conference today. Special recognition must, be, must go to the assistance that we've had from the Iowa Manufacturers Association, who is the co-sponsor. Don Hauser, who is a member of our advisory council, standing back here and kind of checking me out, I think, has been most helpful. He is the vice president of the Iowa Manufacturers Association, and later on today, you will hear from Sid Krager, the president of IMA. Just a moment for a few mechanics to help make the day run smoothly. The IMA will run into some complications. First off, lunch was to be held, and it will, part of it will still be held there, under the rotunda out at the swimming pool, on the same level, all the way around to the left. But the old Iowa weather has taken its toll on these, these new beautiful domes, because they're having a little gripping problem there. And uh, if any of you have brought uh, your, your uh, uh, umbrellas, they come out, because uh, if it, those of you that go in there I might get a little grip uh, occasionally. But we are at Halloween. 210 of you will be fed and they will just immediately to the south. I think that's south. That's the back of this organization. The rest of us will go to the, to the uh, rotunda and have our lunch. And by the way, your lunch ticket is your registration ticket. So don't, uh, uh, don't get, uh, or let this get away from you. Are we going to try to keep every one of our periods there's been a solution proposed by the president. Of, of presentations, right to the button. But 
As you will note, there is to be a question and answer panel between 3.15 and 4.15. Please hold your questions for that time period. Now, now I'm going to say that with one little reservation. That's, that's the prerogative of the chairman, I think. If by chance, and I think this is just a bare chance, if by chance some of the speakers don't talk to their full time, we might have a question or two before home. Because I know there are a couple of them that are not going to be on the panel. So that's just what we'll look in if we can. Now, if you want to write your question on a card, there will be people around here with the red, red host uh, uh, ribbons on that will see that you get tickets. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask any of them, and we'll try to give you the answers. You've noticed that in the rotunda there is a, a slide presentation and also a movie. I can suggest to you that it would, might be worth your time to watch these. This one from Nebraska, the slide presentation, is one that we are we're preparing a very similar one to this for the state of Iowa, which will be available to all of you at any if you want to uh, have it shown at a service club or any type of club. If you go into high school, it's going to be a, about a 20-minute presentation. And we'll cover many of the same subjects on the land. side presentation from Nebraska. Now, and if I don't get on to introducing here very I'm shortly, there's going to be somebody calling the usual the usual tail. And so, uh, and if, if you are watching and the speakers start going like this, because I'm calling, pulling on their coattail. Now, we're going to start with a man that has been in this aquatic liability area for quite some time. He's, right he's after, after the executive the vice president of the Nissan Corporation, Sue Rapid. Both, the the he's the product liability the chairman of the IMA product liability committee, and he has testified before the U.S. Senate and Iowa Joint Interim Insurance Committees. He's talked to many, many groups in Iowa talking about product liability. It's my pleasure to present to you Bob Bevanauer of Cedar Rapids. Political turmoil, which conceivably could result in congressional action stripping a court one victory away from the Indians. Thank you very much. Well, well, and it's a great privilege, I should say, uh, up, to be invited to be on the Des Moines version of the Gong Show. Fish is weak and how to do it. Uh, Royal has done an outstanding job, as you can see, of organization, and I think credit also should go to Sid Crager of INA for his uh, excellent support. Sid, you know, has uh, been very active uh, in community affairs. That is until his wife found out about it and put a stop to that. And Don Hauser is back there somewhere, and uh, Don, of course, uh, we've all heard many stories about Don. And sometimes, Don, we'd like to hear your side. Uh, now, this being Super Bowl Sunday uh, reminds me of a product liability analogy of the football game uh, between two zoos. And uh, we you know the very first player of the game, one of the zoo teams, throws a pass to the rhinoceros. And the rhinoceros comes to come 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 Sure enough, next year to the line in the line, they pass it, and out to the rhinoceros, and company, 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 people, jump, and other touchdown, and the coach is not right there, 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 right and the coach was close by my friend. And he said, I'm going to get him. Don't let that line go with the ball. He just knew it. And this man's got to get him back. And he's going to get him back. And he's going to get him back. And he's going to get him back. So out they go. And then what happens? First ball. A pass to the line. And that's right. Another effect of my back. I see this close to the home. Wow. Good ball. And that's right. 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 And that's Coming, coming, being the only congressman, having the board yeah, yeah. Well, how are you? Well, who are you? I'm the senator. Like Washington is. Senator. 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 Senator.
For instance, they have been sued on a, in a saw case. Remember, contributory negligence is not a defense anymore in strict liability. But they have been sued for $200,000 by a person who lost a thumb in one of their saws. Remember, a thumb. Plus, $200,000 for loss of conjugal rights. Now, I'm not going to repeat what Mr. Palmer said about that situation. <laughs> uh, the Roster Brown Company, Mass, Iowa, manufactures a product which contains authors, and so it can't find insurance at any cost. Ranko Company, Sioux Rapids, Iowa, manufactures fertilizer and handling equipment. You can see the, the trend there, all those conveyors, anything with an accident. Uh, its insurance went from $338 in 1973 to $22,800. They employed 30 people. Mr. Paul Crow said he's got all his employees together this year, and they were going to determine whether he was employee insurance or go bear, risk the suits, use the money for wages. The 30 employees voted to pay the insurance so they wouldn't risk the jobs and perhaps forego a wage increase. Certain gate company, George Iowa, this is unique, kind of uh, interesting. After having its employees buy the company from its uh, employee, the original owner who wanted to retire, found itself then, all at once, without insurance. So these newly made entrepreneurs who used to work in the shop, all at once are finding there seems to be no longer room in the United States for the small businessman without risking his personal home and savings. Uh, Rose Cream Company in Pella, Iowa, reports an interesting case. Uh, uh, two suits are going on with rather competitors. One suit saying the, the window screen was too loose, the bar fell out. The other case saying the window screen was too tight and the woman couldn't get it out during the fire. Now, we all thought, well, screens are supposed to keep the bugs out, and uh, here are uh, two suits that both in the opposite sides of the, the fence, and what's the company making screens supposed to do? Well, now, those horror stories are being brought to you by the same friendly person who brought to you that famous hedge trimmer for one more case that I'm so much hot water about. <laughs> if any of you read business insurance, you know what I'm talking about. But uh, my only advice on that is never listen to other attorneys uh, when they talk about cases, only uh, talk about what's in print in the newspapers, and it's probably good advice for all of us. The funny part of it is I think we're narrowing down to that case, uh, that uh, hedge trimmer case. Well, last year, at this very time, we were urging you to uh, support Iowa tort reform. Subsequently, Senator Bill Pring introduced Senate File 350, which we think brings some reasonableness into the situation. And uh, the bill then was filed with the Senate Judiciary Committee down to two and was never heard from again. Now, uh, what are, are we? I mean, are we going to give them support from the Iowa Bar Association? Well, the good news, I believe, is that certain members of the legal profession are now beginning to vocalize and tell legislatures that the plaintiff's attorney only represents one side, not the whole bar association. Uh, but you can expect that in consistently increasing levels of articulate opposition from the plaintiff's lawyers, and they make very convincing cases, and human rights are the cornerstone as well it should be. Uh, that's why I brought my helmet here. Bill Ball's going to get up. I don't have my cowboy hat, but I will wear one of these football helmets. But in any fairness to the plaintiff's attorneys, I do recall in any of the hearings we in Washington in the morning that the, the police attorneys are attacking the American small manufacturer as purposely producing faulty products. I, I don't say that. Who do they blame? Well, Mr. Robert Deegan, the uh, then president of the Association of Trial Lawyers, testified in Washington, and he says it's, it's an insurance company problem. It's a contrivance to increase rates. Period. That's what the problem is, including, I suppose, the vast number of increasing cases. He was quoted on TV as saying the insurance industry has a conscience of a barracuda and that the insurance company in the industry is ripping off the consumer, recouping the 10 billion they lost on Wall Street, unquote. There it is, folks. That's the answer. It's the insurance company. Well, speaking as one small manufacturer, one who has not had an investment loss in Wall Street, but one who is without insurance and facing the same excess
processes of the new pocket theory that our insurance carriers face, I can see and I can assure you that the problem is the present tort system. Well, what do the plaintiff's attorneys respond to some of the specific things in, in uh, Senate File 350? Well, Attorney Dave Wilson is going to cover 350 in detail. So just, just basically, statute of repose, after which a number of years suit will be precluded. Well, the plaintiff's attorneys say they can see this would take away the rights of parties injured from a failing product through an arbitrary time factor. Well, that's true. But we all live by arbitrary time factors. In fact, there is a statute of limitations in every state after which an uh, accident after it happens, after which it cannot be filed. It's two years in Iowa. So, but, but the, the point is, from our standpoint, the manufacturer and today's strict liability theory cannot possibly build enough profit into a product like a power mower, for example, to operate indefinitely on this automatic reparation system, particularly a quality product that will last 30 or 40 years as a machine tool that Patty Maxwell will be discussing. Installment payments? They say the payment pain installment is taking away the rights of the injured party to make their own proper investments, and they point out that the insurance companies have made bad investments in the past. Now, don't ask me the logic in that statement. Don't ask me. That's what they're telling me. But our case is that that individual does not have a right to a gigantic fortune. We don't believe that, even though he's grievously injured. A very minuscule group of people ever attains $400, $600 million. We're not talking about putting someone's corpus in the hands of a company to handle. We're saying they're not entitled to a windfall in the first place. What we think they are entitled to is to resolve the football case, $5.3 million. Well, at 7%, that's $350,000 a year perpetually without ever touching the principal. I think what they are entitled to, this injured party, is an annuity type a payment through the rest of their lives, but not an entire fortune. Illinois Law Professor Jeffrey O'Connor, by the way, uh, author of Mopalt uh, Automobile Concepts, says that paying anything for pain and suffering uh, is economically unsound. Well, we're, we're saying we could pay something, but let's pay it in installments. Fairly to warn, well, as far as our company is concerned, this is the most insidious part of, of the strict liability theory. A defective product is one that involves a, a, a fairly to warn makes it a defective product. If all else fails, sue under a uh, fairly to warn. Uh, you cannot defend that. We've got 24 suits and nothing's ever fallen or broken down, but try and argue theory of the war and the sign should have been this, that should have been red instead of white, should have been black, should have been red. Uh, Absolutely, this is going to cost you twenty-five, fifty thousand dollars to defend. Well, what do we hear from the Bar Association as far as recommendations and failure to win on a big fat zero? Uh, I haven't heard any recommendation. They say it's your concern, and then they bring in the court. Uh, SF three five zero calls for bringing some suits into this situation of warning labels. State of the art of government standards of the defense, I think probably the attorneys are probably on correct grounds when they talk about self-serving standards. That's a, that's a very uh, a bad problem here. What our problem is, is this area of subsequent improvements. We not only mean the manufacturer, but, but discourages improvement of the product. In the old days, product improvements were not admissible as evidence. Now the plaintiff's attorneys will say, well, it can only be bought in the conditions, but in the real world, we all know out there that subse subsequent improvements are brought into the courtroom. Do we lose our mic? Can you hear me? Okay. Um, so we think uh, there should be some reason brought into this uh, statement of the uh, state of the art. Then it claims we also believe that here we have a self fulfilling prophecy. The dollar amount of the claims in Senate File 350 would be eliminated. You couldn't be putting in the paper a million dollars for the loss of the thumb. We believe this constant publicity of boxcar figure lawsuits, I'm not talking about a war, just the claim, contributes towards the suit syndrome. The wheel of fortune, expectation, now it's being more and faster and faster until now we read the Los Angeles papers. The frightful case where the two parents were uh, convicted of putting lie in their infant daughter's formula with the expectation of suing the baby food manufacturer. Now these people are criminal, they're the greatest of 
society, but doesn't that tell us something about the current easy money law through the people of this country? Aren't we witnessing the self-fulfilling prophecy? And are we seeing them destroyed by either the means nor state trial or the associations? Representatives of the Isle of Queen's Bar have told me during open meeting they have no hang up about the elimination of the amount of the claim. So why not that they at least recommended this small change? I think uh, Dave Wilson is going to give you a more thorough analysis, but as an example of our legislatures and attorneys, I think yesterday's business insurance magazine might give a clue of what we could not expect. Washington is now going to announce as a first state to pass a law to dictate the legal obligation of both ski operators and skiers. Now, you remember the $1.5 million case in Vermont about a skier whose ski hit the end of us and threw it over a cliff. Well, the new Washington law divides this into sections, one dealing with minimum insurance to protect the consumer, the second with dealing mandatory warnings to protect the consumer, and the third, stipulating that the skier must be the sole judge of his ability and requires that skiers must properly use designated areas and ski lifts. Now that would be beautiful for the manufacturer if we just had something, something to hang our hats on. We understand that the Iowa, uh, some representatives from the Iowa Physical Education uh, Association are here today and speaking at their convention. I know they're extremely concerned. They asked me what's been done with our problem, the coaches, I, and they are being sued under negligence, not strict liability. All I'd like to do is suggest at this time, Professor Griffin is here. If you want to ask me any questions about how SF3 Highway might help you coaches and teachers, uh, I direct your qu uh, questions to Professor Griffin. Again, I'd like to thank Patty Maxwell, who didn't flinch one bit when we asked her to come all the way out from Massachusetts to the cold uh, uh, prairies of Iowa. Uh, Patty's been one of the leaders in tort reform since before the, uh, 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 the White House conference, and uh, I certainly recommend you give her a warm welcome this afternoon and uh, also support the organization in tort. Uh, the rest of the day should be most interesting to you. I recommend strongly you meet at 